Hey, are you sick and tired of being an unemployed React developer? Well, I've got good news for you. Well, not really, but in this video we're gonna do some coding together and it's gonna be like a very basic junior challenge that a React interview question might be, you know, oriented towards. So that means I'll explain what we're gonna be doing, then you can have some time and try to do it yourself and then afterwards uh, you can watch my approach to solving this uh, problem. This is an idea I got from YouTube and I'll link the original video in the description. Essentially what we're gonna be doing is creating a custom React hook that is gonna be called on countdown, but you can pretty much call it whatever you want. And in that hook, we're gonna give the hook an initial time and whenever the time runs out, a callback that can be passed as the second parameter to that hook will be executed. But that's not it, not quite. We'll also return the current time. So we have a state of the current time that the countdown is on in the component that we are using it from. And by abstracting this uh, countdown logic into its own hook, we can reuse it across different components, across different projects, and it's always just a pretty good idea to abstract logic into hooks if you have the possibility to do so. Okay, so now is your time to code this out and if you either have solved it or if you can't get any further, then let's jump in together and take a look at how I would go about solving this uh, custom React hook. Um, my ideal approach for having hooks is making a custom folder that is called hooks and inside of this hooks folder we can then create um, our countdown hook. So let's call it use countdown.ts we are going to be using uh, TypeScript as always for this. And now the question is, how do we go about making this hook? What do we want from this hook? So I think the first thing is exporting a constant that is called use countdown. So oh, use countdown. So why do we call it use countdown? That is very specific. Uh, why the use? So when you're creating custom hooks in React, that have all the rights to access different hooks. Um, for example, React um, built-in hooks like state and use effect, they require you to use the word use for your hook as the first you know, word in the hook. That essentially gives this hook the same you know, rights and quotes as a component. So while we could use a hook, for example, in our app right here, just have a use state uh, right here, for example, uh, if we didn't call this use countdown, let me show you what happens. So let's access, um, oh, and let's disable GitHub Copilot for this. We won't need that. Uh, so for example, let's try accessing some states, right? So let's have these, uh, the, the value and the setter. It's going to be use state. We're going to import that. It's just going to be, you know, five. It doesn't really matter. And then number set number. Um, save that, save that, and now we are going to return the number from this uh, counter. const number is equal to countdown, and we're going to invoke that function on the uh, app. And let's launch the server, just uh, quickly see what happens. So we're going to start up the server, go to our local host, just to illustrate my point really quick. Um, and then whenever that loaded, which will hopefully happen in a second, as you can see, we get an error. React hook use state is called in function countdown. So this is a regular function now that is neither a React function component nor a React custom hook function. React component must start with upper, uppercase letter. And what's important for us, React hook names must start with the word use. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, use countdown and now we can um, access the state and get to work on or use countdown we can get rid of this for now on our countdown hook so we won't get any error now okay with that out of the way this is not what we want um, so use countdown what do we expect from this function first whenever we call this function we need an initial time obviously which is going to be a number and you can define this however you want, like the um, the um, like the, not the amount of time that you want, but it, whether it's like seconds or milliseconds. And because we're gonna probably be working with a function called use interval, 
that is going to be in milliseconds. And whenever you write a function and want to document what the parameters are or do, you can just type a slash with a double star and then you'll have this at param, which is very, very good for having easy to maintain projects. Also, if you're working with other developers. So this is a best practice that we're uh, doing together right now. Uh, just uh, really be verbose on what your parameters expect. So the initial time is going to be the initial countdown timer in milliseconds. So that's what we expect. We don't expect a five because that would be five milliseconds. Now, once we have our initial time, what should happen with that? So we probably want a use effect. Let's initialize that. It's going to be a function. And for now, that's going to be an empty dependency array. Now, what should happen whenever this component uh, or hook renders? Um, essentially, we want to have an interval that is equal to set interval. And if you've never worked with the set interval before, basically what it does is you pass it a callback function. So a function that invokes itself pretty much and whatever is inside these curly braces will get run. And then how often do you want it run? You can pass as the second parameter and we want to um, have this run every one second. So 1000 milliseconds. You could also pass that as another maybe optional parameter. So for example, we can call it interval. That's also going to be a number. And I've changed to the English keyboard. Hold up. Let me change that to the German one and the interval. Uh, if you want to make it optional, you can pass it a quote. And so we can say interv uh, interval that we get how, um, okay, maybe the naming here isn't, you know, perfect, but we can say const custom interval maybe. And then have the interval that is either a number or undefined. And if that is undefined, we can say 1000. So this means if this previous thing is null or undefined, we're going to pass 1000. Uh, you could also just have um, something like this is equal to 1000. And then it all it always assumes the default value of 1000. Um, if it doesn't get passed, but if it gets passed, then this value will be overwritten. Okay. Now, um, this interval, what do we want to happen? We want to um, basically set something. So we need a state. Uh, let's have a setter and a value. It's going to be equal to use state. And that state is going to be the initial time. So the state is going to be time. We're going to have the set time. And that is going to be initialized as whatever uh, we pass as the first parameter of this use countdown. And this time should be reduced every time the interval is run. So every second. Uh, how do we do that? That would be in the set interval. So this function gets ran every time this uh, time passes. Uh, so we can set the time to whatever it was previously, which we get as the first argument. And then we could um, say previous minus interval. Um, yeah, okay, I, I think that should work. And now that we have that, we also need to return something from this use effect, which would be a clear interval. So whenever this component unmounts, so that means when it gets removed from the screen, uh, for example, we switch over to a different page in the browser, that would mean this unmounts, um, and then we're gonna run something, mm, which is gonna be a clear interval of this right here. So, you know, when we, this, this is used to clean up, if we wouldn't clean up after ourselves with this use effect, then even after we left the page and this hook is not visible anymore, it would still run the set interval and update some states somewhere in the application. And that would be really bad for performance. And that's not what we want. So we're going to return the clear interval. Now, um, whenever the time changes, then we would probably want something to happen. So if time is equal to zero, um, we want to execute a callback. So let's call it a callback. It's going to be something like a function that returns just a void. 
And if the time is equal to zero, then we're gonna just invoke, oops, invoke the callback inside of this use effect that needs to be above the return. Okay, let's uh, let's just take a look if this works. Um, but before we do that, we also we also need to update or um, you know whatever we expect from this function. So the callback is gonna be executed function whenever timer reaches zero and then the param interval is optional and um, I think that is pretty verbose by itself so we, we don't really need to describe that uh, very much now let's save that and see if it works so um, we can oh and we also want to return the time to the app so that means we will have access to the time right here um, so we can say const uh, time is equal to use countdown. Invoke that the initial time, uh, let's declare it here. Const initial time is equal to be uh, five times 1000, so five seconds. We're gonna pass that as the first argument. Then the callback is gonna be just a console log of hello, I'm done. And we're not gonna pass the interval. As you can see, it's already happy. Um, because the interval has a default value. If it didn't, uh, if it was just a number, then this should throw an error, and it does because it also expects the interval. Now we have access to the time in the front end. Let's log out the time right here and see if it works. Um, so let's go into the console. So, okay, five, four, three, two, one. Hello, I'm done. But now it keeps on deducting from the state which is not what we want why is that happening um, let's take a look so whenever time changes we are setting the interval and then after one second we're removing the interval um, so that means we can do a conditional here so if time is greater than zero we're gonna set the time and if it's not then it shouldn't set the time because there is absolutely no point to that so five four three two one zero and it logs hello i'm done and then it stops great that is exactly what we want and that means we are pretty much done with this hook as always if you have any um, improvements to suggest to this hook um i'd be very happy to read them in the comments because as you know with uh, web development there is no one right approach there are a lot of approaches you can take a lot of different ones so i'm always happy to hear um, how other people do it uh, this would be my approach of having a use countdown uh, for your React projects. And you can, uh, um, by abstracting this logic into its own hook, you can recycle it really well across your different projects um, or, you know, across different components as well. So, for example, if you wanted to have like a timer on the uh, front end here, we could say um, the world is going to blow up in and then we're gonna have the time divided by 1000 because um, it comes back as milliseconds remember the world is going to blow up in um, that many seconds and mm, when it blows up um, if time oh actually no we pass that as the callback right here then we're gonna alert and alert the user of boom so the world uh, blew up so let's restart the page the world is going to blow up in three two one boom the world blew up great that is exactly what we want and you can do with that uh, pretty much whatever you want in your react projects okay that was my approach if you have a different one i'd be very happy if you uh, share it below Thank you for watching and I wish you a lot of fun with this uh, custom React hook. Have a good one and see you in the next video. Bye bye.